Okay, so I'm going to cover eight more stitch patterns today and I'm going to do my best to give you some ideas on how you can quickly cover area because while a wall quilt can be pretty small when you start it, once you start trying to fill the area with interesting stitching that looks nice with your fabrics and your design, you can run out of ideas of things to do pretty quickly. And so I'm going to attempt to give you eight more ideas for filling up space. And if you remember, our inspiration was the Wallflowers quilt, which I finished that series recently, and it looked like this. And just to review, there are four things that we're trying to keep in mind. Sustainability, because we want to be able to do what we're doing over and over and over again. Interdependence, because we need to remember that all the different parts of our quilt play off of each other. Flow or movement, because we do want to do work that is not static. And then we want it to have an organic quality rather than a geometric quality, at least for what I'm teaching here. And as always, I want to point out that good old paper practice is a good way to get proficient at these things without wasting your expensive materials. Say I have a little place where my batting shows, or because I've accidentally poked a hole, or I just don't like what's going on there. What I like to do is put a cookie shape over the top of it. And so you can just do like a diamond. You can do stars if you want, and you can do like this and go around. Or you can start like this and then go around, which I don't like as much. Another thing you can do is, you know, a heart. I actually use a lot of hearts. And then after you've done that, if you want, you can do rows of these things. And in most cases, it's going to require the starting and stopping that we talked about with the little boxes. Another idea that you could do is lightning, which is very easy. You know, you just do this kind of thing across your piece. and. You know, you could do a bunch of them and have them kind of go different ways, whatever you think, and do these sorts of shapes. Which reminds me, to cross your area, you can do strips. I like to just go across and then maybe go back again and then kind of start doing some of this kind of thing. And then maybe put a little wiggle in the line, like a wiggle or even, you can even do like a scallop. And, you know, you could paint this center part. So anything that you could fill this in with color. You could even, instead of doing that, you could do a big line of satin stitching down the center. But so in this way, you would cover your piece if you were trying to do that quickly. You know, and then you can just decide if extra lines of stitching add and if you like those to be with the same thread or different thread. But so you can do all kinds of shapes that just cross your piece. Another way that you can quickly cross your piece and fill up a lot of area, say you have a little strip of foreground that you want to fill in on a wall hanging that is that's your strip you want to fill in. I like to do what I call triangles. And so I like to come over, make a triangle go back, and just do this. So that's another kind of way that you can get across your piece. You know, and if you wanted, you could start and stop and quilt a little extra little piece inside depending on what you're trying to accomplish. And then there's something that I call stone walls. And I usually do it with a zigzag. So the stone wall is just circles. So you just go around and then you go in the neighboring area and then you go like this. And then you try to make some bigger. But so you can fill up an area pretty quickly with that, what I call a stone wall stitch. 
And then one thing that can add a little bit of interest to something is a pine tree. If you're doing something and you want little trees, you know, on a back slope of a hill, you can do, and you can do these big too, but you can do a tree where you just kind of get your tree going and then do some little pine tree action. And here, when we're driving on a trip or something, I often find myself just watching the horizon and looking at the trees. And if you wanted to, you could fill up a whole hillside with those. Or you could do one that's big, that has a big presence on your wall piece, and kind of play with how much of that is see-through and what that really looks like. And you'll find that you know, you want to go over quite a bit to make this turn into the tree that you want. Anyway, so you can do pine tree shapes. Another thing that I do a lot that is kind of fun, it's scroll shapes. And so you just kind of come and make a scroll and then you figure out how much you like to outline that scroll and how much you want to cut it out. And so you can do these kind of shapes. And I actually do these sorts of things a lot on my pieces. And if you want, a very natural thing to do is at some point make a point on there. And I do that a lot. The last thing I want to show you isn't really a stitch, but a way of stitching. And it's something that's very helpful when you're trying to fill up area. So I'm going to talk about it here. And I call it drifts. And so say this is my piece. I did this a lot actually when I would quilt poppy pot holders because it just, I did it the first time and I always liked it. And so instead of trying to do, say, a meander all over this entire pot holder, which would actually be visually kind of boring. I would do a bit here, and then I would come and do some over here. And then maybe And so I always thought of this as just doing drifts of quilting. And then, you know, when you do a pot holder, you always want to stitch around the outside. And so, you know, you would do that and so you could pick up anywhere you wanted to. And then this would be the pot holder rather than one with wall to wall quilting. It just adds a little bit of interest, especially if you can see your stitches and it gives a nice texture when there's light um, coming in on the side or something. <laughs>